the field and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine, and the soft, refreshing rain. this Sunday, March 19th, and it is time to be real with Jesus. Today is Youth Sunday, as you can see by the smattering of blue shirts up here in this corner and kind of throughout the sanctuary. We are so glad you all joined us today, and wish uh, blessings to all of those worshiping with us at home or at some other time during the week. We invite you all to coffee hour after worship today in Memorial Hall, hosted by our fantastic and wonderful youth group. And on your way to uh, coffee hour, you'll see in the lobby, there's a little photo booth, photo op set up for you. So please take advantage of that. And then share your pictures with us so that we can share them with all of our friends on social media and on our website. Let us worship God. Hearts open, minds awake, save us, heaven's sake, leave us not alone in hatred's wake, show us been focusing on where love is to really be found in this season of Lent. 
We too often look for love in the security of powerful figures, sure that they can fix things for us. It was no different for the people of the First and Second Testaments. They were looking for kings, saviors, liberators who would offer peace and security in uncertain times. And they often looked in all of the wrong places. The Pharisees just can't believe that this troublemaker, rule breaker, named Jesus is the one, the Son of God and Savior. Time and again, Jesus uses the unlikely metaphor of a shepherd to teach us how we ought to love and care for each other. No wonder the shepherd does what is needed when it is needed, regardless of the rules. our hearts to the love of God. Before we even utter a word, we can be assured God will offer us grace and a way forward. For this reason, we can be honest what, with what most pains us most about our own thoughts and actions. Let us pray. Holy and merciful one, in this season of discernment, we come bringing our deepest longings and our failed attempts at satisfying them. We have often looked for love, for acceptance and security in the halls of the perceived power of public opinion or unexamined presumptions about others not like us, rather than the real power of love and care for one another. At times we fail to see that you have already given us what really matters, your love and acceptance. You provide opportunities all around us to make a difference in the lives of others by affirming their worth and dignity. You give us a fresh start each day, inviting us to do better. In this silence, we bring you our pleas for openness to a different way of living. My friends, be assured by the psalmist who says that the Lord is our shepherd, whose goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. Let us respond together. We open our hearts, our minds, our souls, our vision to the ways of love, created by God, embodied in Jesus, and already moving in us by the Spirit. We are forgiven, loved, and freed. Amen. The love and peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to pass this love and peace to one another by crossing your arms across your chest, indicating love and then opening them with the common two finger sign for peace, remembering to send some of that love and peace to those worshiping remotely. Please stand in body or spirit.
cut in the middle of the swords of this life. I won't turn back, I know you are near. Here we go. Here we go. 
mais avec We invite the children up for uh, oh, children's time, children's time. <laughs> Mike's four and five. Hello friends, it is so great to see you today. As you may know by this gigantic word on our altar, our main message is about love in this season of Lent. Let's, let's, let's say, say a, a repeat, repeat after me rhyme. rhyme. We, we come, today, come today, and we're, we're here, here to say, say we're, here to we're looking for love, love in just, just the right way. way. For, for Jesus, Jesus is clear, clear when, when we, we listen must listen to hear, hear. his love for us is oh so dear. Great job. Today we are talking about looking for love in the example of a shepherd. Now I don't think most of us know what being a shepherd is like, but there are shepherds in this world and there are sheep and there are sheep dogs. Have you ever seen one? Hold on. Yeah, herding dogs. dogs as well. They come in many shapes and sizes, but the one thing they have in common is that they love to keep their animal herds all together. That's why they are called herding dogs. When one sheep or cow goes away from the others, the dogs go get them quickly and chase them back to the group. The shepherd and shepherding dogs don't want any of their flock to get lost or be in danger. So what do we have here in our Scrabble board today? The Bible, oh wait, shepherds care. The Bible tells us that God loves us like a shepherd. Do I think the They're not in here. Oh wait. Oh, They're right, not in there. <laughs> they love and care for their herd all the time, the same way God loves and cares for us. And we also should care for others like a shepherd or a sheepdog. Can you imagine if everyone in the world was looking out for each other? We would feel so much love every day. We can be part of creating that kind of world. God, God is love and love is God. God. Join, Join us for, for the our repeat, repeat after, after me prayer. Prayer. God, God is love. God is love. Love, love is, is God. God. Love is God. Amen. Amen. Great job. You can go to your families now. We have been inviting friends in the congregation to share their testimonies of love, and today is no different. Um, today's a little special for us because today we have Molly Jarrett, who was once one of our fantastic youth, and now she's one of our fantastic young adults. So here you are, Molly. Good morning. My name is Molly. When I first got a text from PK asking me to talk about where I find love for seven minutes, I immediately thought she and Pastor Kaylee will make up any excuse to see me. <laughs> However, after mulling over the idea of where I find love, I narrowed it down to the people I surround myself with. I was lucky enough that I grew up in a church filled with amazing people. It was the people in this church that baptized me, confirmed me, sang to me on my 18th birthday, and sent me care packages throughout all four years of college. It is safe to say in my 23 years of life, I have spent many, 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 many days and even multiple nights at this church. Growing up, my mom instilled in me the importance of having a strong faith. 
Watching her teach Sunday school every Sunday morning, whether she was standing on tables, dressed up as Jesus, or making the church do a whole Christmas show based on the Muppets, I saw how important her faith, her faith in this church was to her. I also saw how accepting and loving Neff's UCC really is. As I got into middle and high school, my mom passed me the leadership baton and I began to get more and more involved in the youth group. This is where the love of this church exploded for me. Within these walls, I felt accepted and safe. In 2015, Dave DePolantonio, Kimmy, AJ, Rachel, Jen, Natalie, and I got into a van we named The Beast and drove to Pittsburgh to spend a week at the Pittsburgh Project. This was a Christian-based volunteer project that helped restore houses in Pittsburgh for the elderly or those with disabilities. This was my first of many big trips with this church. I was unsure of what to expect and was hesitant to leave my mom home alone. That summer, my parents unexpectedly separated and life at home felt anything but safe and loving. I'm incredibly grateful that my mom pushed for me to go despite what was happening at home. After a long car ride of AJ's specially curated playlists and Dave's work stories, we finally arrived in Pittsburgh. We stayed in a dorm-like building in rooms filled with bunk beds. Rachel, Kimmy, and I got paired up with two boys from another church. Our house was owned by an elderly woman who lived with her adult daughter who was blind. The house was no longer safe for the two women to live in. During the week, we replaced their porch steps and railing, cleaned up the front yard, and made the shower more accessible. Although we were just high schoolers with absolutely no skill set in construction work, the woman was overjoyed with the renovations we made to her home. We ended the week with a homemade lunch by the woman and she joined us for a church service at the program. Listening to the stories of the other youth and who they helped sparked something in me. The love in that room was overwhelming and contagious. The six of us left that program closer and with a greater understanding of our ability to help others. After that experience, I jumped on every single opportunity to spend time with my church family and help the community. Between every confirmation retreat, going to Disney, pancake dinners, and regional youth events, the amazing experiences and people I could talk about today are endless. However, I was given seven minutes. So I will only touch on some of my favorite experiences. If I had to tell you where love is shown the most at this church, my answer would be on a cold fall night in a cardboard box in the parking lot. Yes, you heard me correctly. The sleep out for the homeless started with our church and continued with local churches in our region. We would decorate cardboard boxes, play games, and learn about the ever-increasing homelessness of youth. To this day, one of the most peaceful and freeing moments of my life is sitting around a campfire surrounded by my church family singing Kumbaya. I can even say that waking up at 6 a.m. on concrete in a soggy cardboard box to PK singing Christmas songs gave me a sense of love and safety like no other. Speaking of PK, in January 2017, she asked me to join the search committee to help our church complete its family by finding a new associate pastor. Being the youngest member in the team that brought Pastor Kaylee into this crazy and loving family gave me a huge sense of pride and belonging, even though she did forget to acknowledge I was on her search committee during her installation service on my 18th birthday. <laughs> You're welcome. The church allowing a 17-year-old to use her voice spoke volumes of the love and respect they have for everyone. Today, I am lucky enough to have been able to take the love from the church and bring it into my very own classroom. I understand what it, likes to be, what it feels like to be in an environment where I'm not accepted and not encouraged to spread my wings. Neff UCC taught me that despite a speech impediment and an extreme lack of confidence, I am strong, loving, and capable of doing anything I put my mind to. The empowering love that adults such as Dina Carell, Afton Ham, PK, Pastor Kaylee, and this entire church have shown me is my inspiration every day when I teach kindergarten students. 
maneuvering a room of 23 five-year-olds with the constant pressure of administration and parents, it can be easy to lose my patience. However, being surrounded by those 23 students every day has brought me a great deal of love. On January 24th, I got into a car accident on my way to work. Due to being hospitalized, I was unable to make it to work. When I returned to work, I was unable to bend over, turn my head, or lift anything. This made it extremely difficult to do normal kindergarten teacher activities, such as tie shoes. I didn't want to scare my students, so I avoided telling them what happened. However, I had to tell them that my movement would be limited and I would need them to help out. My one student, Zoe, is constantly out of her seat, taking things that don't belong to her and not listening to directions. Once she heard that I was not feeling well, she came up to me and said, Miss Jarrett, my mom rubs my back when I don't feel well, so I'm going to do that for you until you are better. She continued to come up and rub my back every couple hours for an entire week, asking every time, did I make you better yet? My Malachi, who does not sit still and also has trouble following directions, is the only student out of 23 who knows how to tie his shoes. For a whole week, he tied every loose shoelace in that classroom, so I wouldn't have to bend down. These were initial and non-prompted acts of love by five-year-olds. After hearing my experiences of love and the people I surround myself with, I challenge you to embrace your inner five-year-old. Wear your heart in your sleeve, aim to make yourself and others better, and never let a shoe go untied. Remember, they know we are Christians by our love. Thank you. Maybe you remember a song called Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places, sung by Johnny Lee. The words say, looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces. Where do you look for love, meaning, purpose, satisfaction, and security? Lent is traditionally a time to revisit our priorities. We hope this worship series will give us a lens through which to do just that. Each week offers us a model of love based on the just stories of Jesus' life and ministry, death and resurrection. And each week, we consider the opposites that show up often valued in our culture, in those things that are distracting us, fame, money, control, possessions, power, and certainty, unhealthy relationships, or addictions. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends today's lesson. May God bless our, he our hearing and living out of the God's word in the world. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mitchell Roth, and I'm a senior at Parkland High School. I intend to major in statistics in college with hopes of becoming an actuary in the future. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Be Real, and YouTube are all social media apps that many of us have heard of or use on a daily basis. These platforms allow us to connect with others around the globe and provide us with the opportunity to paint a picture of our real lives. However, over the past few years, the meaning of these platforms has been misconstrued. The pictures and videos many of us share online now only show our ideal image, how we want our lives to appear to others and not our true selves. In my English class earlier this year, we had a conversation about social media, specifically the app Be Real, a newer app that pro prompts you to post once a day at a randomly selected time. When I first downloaded this app, I believed it differed from other social media, that it was much more authentic and portrayed my true life. My English teacher, however, challenged this idea, saying you are still stopping your life to take a photo and therefore distracting yourself from your real life. He meant this, by taking out your phone while involved in other parts of your life, 
Are you truly being real to yourself? Or are you still just trying to create a superficial image to share with others? As I prepared for this sermon today, I kept coming back to this conversation about social media and made a personal connection to prayer. When we are young, oftentimes our parents teach us to pray in a very structured manner. We pray before bed or before a meal, with our hands folded and our heads bowed. Over time, while I have found this an effective way to focus during prayer, I have also realized that prayer in this organized manner may force us to try to appear perfect to God. Prayer in reality can and should happen any moment of the day, week, month, or year, in private or in public, whether you are comfortable or uncomfortable, prepared or unprepared. Through this type of prayer, we can truly be real before God and strengthen our faith. Amen. Good morning. I'm Cameron and I will be graduating from Northern Lehigh High School after this year. And after graduation, I will be attending Marywood University to study music therapy. Growing up in this church has provided me many opportunities, such as attending youth group activities, Sunday school, children's church, confirmation, and playing music for services. Our church has also provided me with several service activities in order to help the community in need. Service projects through the church helped me to choose a future career path, as I learned that I really enjoy helping people. Our amazing church community has guided me through life with its teachings and kindness. Today, I will be playing Good Riddance by Green Day, and I wanted to explain what the song means to me before I play it. I believe that this song is about making the best of your life, because we all have limited time. It is as, as if the singer Billy Joe Armstrong is singing this song to someone who died within his lifetime. He sings, another turning point, or fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test, and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. I believe that I have spent valuable time with her congregation. Because everyone has helped in teaching me important lessons, such as being kind and friendly to others. I've also had the privilege to participate in many youth group activities, such as Youth Sunday, many golfing, and much more. I value all the activities that I was able to participate in throughout the church because it helped me to get to know the youth of the church and develop friendships. This song could also be about accepting different paths that people you know will take in life. Our church is very welcoming to everyone in different walks of life. My life path is about to change when I move into college in a couple of months. I am very appreciative to be a part of a helpful church community. Billy Joe Armstrong wrote this song when his girlfriend moved to Ecuador to live with her family and continue her schooling. This song is his way of dealing with a change in both his life and the life of his girlfriend. My change in lifestyle may be hard on both my family and friends, as I will not be able to see them as often. However, I know that God helps us through difficult situations like this. I believe that God helps us to find our own ways to cope with problems. For musicians, he helps us to cope through music. I am looking forward to obtaining a degree in music therapy as I will be able to teach this coping skill to those in need. I appreciate the church and what they have done to help and encourage me throughout my childhood. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Andy Hill, and I'm a senior at Parkland High School. I plan to study environmental science, and unfortunately, I do not know where that will be just yet. When I was given the theme of this year's service, I gotta say, I was a little surprised. It seemed a little modern for Pastor Kaylee, but I think it was a product of the youth group advisory team. Uh, I myself, I don't even own the Be Real app, but 
when I saw the theme, it was my understanding that the service was going to be directed t- towards the idea of being real or being honest with Jesus. So when I sat down, I decided to take it in a fairly literal direction. The premise of the Be Real app is simple. It has two key features distinguishing it from other forms of social media. The first is that when someone takes a photo from either the standard camera or the selfie one, the app will then take a picture from the other camera as well. The second feature is that the Be Real app delivers a notification every day at a random time, giving the user a two minute window to upload their daily post. With these two features, the app encourages users to show authenticity. This can be refreshing to see, as apps like Instagram, uh, they often showcase carefully curated moments that don't give a real sense of what the poster's life is like behind the camera. It's natural to want to give off that sense of perfection to others, to want to show them the best form of you. But as the Be Real app has helped to demonstrate, it's important to be honest with yourself to others and to show vulnerability and imperfection. I believe the same can be said of our relationship with faith. Sunday church is like the Instagram post of faith. It's there for a reason. Many of us feel the most connected with Jesus in the place designed to do just that. You know when you'll be there, you know when you'll post, and you have it set up just right to have the best experience. Yet while having a plethora of those Sunday Instagram posts is a big part of our relationship with faith, It's the random times that we need faith in our lives that highlight the importance of all this. Whether it's struggling through pain, mentally or physically, wanting to share joy, the moments that we spend with Jesus that take place in our daily lives are authentic and really prove his value to us. They're the ones that I cherish the most that give me the best idea of what faith means to me. I think that's the most difficult part of growing up and learning uh, the importance of faith in our lives. Um, Keeping faith with you and looking for it outside the walls of the sanctuary or memorial hall can be pretty difficult, and it's something that I've strove to work on as I've gotten older and can better understand its importance. For me, the moments that come to mind are from all over the place, whether it be dealing with injuries, losses, helping others or being helped by others. They all stem from different places, but regardless of the context, any time I've been real and vulnerable with needing Jesus outside of the church, I've left feeling better because of it. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If I can circle back to the analogy for a minute, though, there's a reason why Instagram has 1.5 billion active monthly users, just like there's a reason that we all gather here every week in the sanctuary. Coming together at a planned and designated place of worship is comforting. Many of my best memories from my childhood have come from in here, whether it be playing in the brass ensembles, pestering Pastor Kaylee in confirmation, or the candlelit services on Christmas Eve. I'm very thankful for all that the church has given to me, and I hope to keep giving back in the future. Thank you. Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and store friends in your mind. Hang it 
on a shelf in good health and good time. Tattoos the memories and this task goes on trial. For what it's worth, it was worth all the while. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. In this season of Lent, we are joining together in a prayer using an ancient form in the church. The Greek words Kyrie eleison mean God have mercy on us, and we learned a simple chant last week that will be repeating throughout Lent. We will be led in various intercessions, prayers, and categories, followed our sung Kyrie response to each one. The repetition of this beautiful Kyrie is itself a prayer. God's mercy is a gift of love given freely to us. Loving Creator, we come to you asking for the power of love found in deep care and attention to matters of the world. You have asked us to love as you love us. Help us to do what we can, where we can, even when it seems there are endless things to do to alleviate the suffering of so many. Show us how to love like a shepherd, offering respite as we are able. Show us how to love without judgment of those who need love the most. God have mercy. In this singing, we lift up this world to you with our love. Loving Sovereign, we come to you asking for the power of love found deep in care and attention to matters in our communities, even and especially when we do not understand one another, think or believe like one another, open our hearts to, open our hearts to a common humanity, oh my God, humanity, <laughs> so that we might build up, not break down. Show us how to love beyond the boundaries of ideology. We pray this day for every name on our prayer list and those on our hearts. God have mercy. In this singing, we lift up this community to you with our love.
loving parent, we come to you asking for the power of love found in deep care and attention to matters in our homes and relationships. Show us how to create still waters, an oasis for comfort for each other. Show us how to love in ways that offer more freedom of mind, body, and spirit, not less. We pause in silence as we each lift up in our hearts the relationships that need your love. God, have mercy. In this singing, we lift up each other to you with our love. Lover of our souls, we come to you asking for the power of love found deep in care and attention to matters in our own hearts. Open our eyes with healing suede that cures our inability to see your invitation to more abundant life. Help us know the lure of your love for us so that we may be your love in this world, in our communities, and in the lives of whom we intersect each day. God have mercy. In this singing we lift up, we we open ourselves to your love. And so, as your people following in the ways of your Son, Jesus, who set the pattern of love as shepherding and gathering and healing, we pray with confidence the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is lots going on here in the next couple weeks and months. Um, this coming Tuesday, the 21st of March, we have our Dine and Donate event at PJ Wellhands on Broadway in Allentown. You can stop by at any time during the day from the time they open to the time they close to enjoy some delicious food and a portion of the proceeds will uh, directly benefit the church here. Next Saturday on March 25th is Ms. Tiffany's Nerfs and Nachos event, so please see the information in your bulletin to sign up for that. And next Sunday, we will have our Care Patrol event um, after worship. If you'd like to sign up for that, please uh, contact Pastor Carey or call the main office. There's information in your bulletin. And we'll also have our first communion class, which also has information in your bulletin for you. The Easter, Easter is coming up really quick, and on April 1st, we have our Easter egg hunt. So if you want to sign up any of the children in your lives from infant through age 10, there is an, uh, a sign-up sheet in your bulletin as well as one online. And we are looking for donations of candy. We do not need any eggs, um, but there is a container in the lobby area if you feel called to donate candy for that. Be sure to see all of our um, Lent and st Lent study opportunities as well as our Holy Week and Easter worship schedules. And if, you're, if I have not said enough things that I want to make sure I don't forget, March 30th we have Faith on Tap at 6.30 at Corn Fine, so please come out and join us on that night for a wonderful gathering of people. At this time, I want to invite forward Everett, Le Everett Leitner um, to speak about Feed My Starving Children. Good morning. When I was seven years old, my dad took me to a uh, Feed My Starving Children event. I did not want to go at all, and I was not happy he made me. But once the event started, I had a great time. In fact, on the way home, I thought about how much I can't wait to do it again. My dad must have felt the same way, because he brought the idea up to Pastor Chris. And for two years in a row, we held the meal packing event here. But both years, both years, I helped out, and we packed over 200,000 meals. Then COVID hit, and all meal packings were canceled. 
meal packing events are canceled. Now meal packing events are starting to happen again all over the country, and we must decide whether we want to host again next spring. If you, if like me, you want to, you would like to see this event return, please see your bulletin for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Everett. Thank you all. Uh, we give God thanks for all of the ways that you support God's church here, and we ask that God bless our offerings and work as God's people. Thank you. 
go forth into the world looking for love in all the right places. We will look for the signs of the shepherd tending to the world around us with love. Raise your thoughts a little higher Use your words to inspire 